Hey everybody, man, it's great to be back in here with you again for our Iron Man ministry. We're going through uh, different habits of, the, of successful people, uh, looking at how to win the day. And last week we, we talked about eating the frog. In other words, what, what do you have to do first early in the day uh, to get your day off to the right start? Talked a lot about good habits that you can have in the morning uh, or in the evening that's going to help you develop some quiet time with God, that's going to help you uh, be successful throughout the day. So today uh, we're looking at chapter six in this book, Win the Day. And if you're not following along with the book, you know, it's okay. Uh, you'll still be able to get something out of this. But uh, today we're talking about the mundane of excellence. And if, if you know what the word mundane is, it's basically, it's slow, it's repetitive, it's, it's not exciting. It's kind of could be described as like the same old, same old. Like if, you, if somebody says your job is mundane, that's not normally a good thing. <laughs> you know, you want to have a little bit of excitement in it. So why would we put the word mundane with excellence? Well, to be uh, excellent at something, it's going to take some repetition. We talked before, and we're going to say it again today, you know, consistency over intensity uh, when we're looking at developing good habits. And the truth is, is that being excellent at something or being great at something, it's sort of reminiscent of the old Wizard of Oz movie. You remember when they finally get to the land of Oz and, they, and they're standing before the great wizard and I think Toto the little dog goes over and grabs a curtain and pulls it back and all it is is just kind of this little frail old man uh, behind it controlling everything. And that's sort of what it, it's like when we look behind uh, and we look behind the scenes and what it takes to be excellent at something. Here's your first slide. It says this. It says almost anyone can accomplish anything if they work at it long enough, hard enough and smart enough. Now we've gone through that before. Um, but there's nothing that's that special uh, about being excellent. There's no magic to it. Um, and the good news is that if we do the natural, if we do the hard work, um, this is where grit meets God. Okay, When God sees our hard work and he knows that we're putting in what it takes, God's going to bless that. And that's where he says that grit meets God's grace. Um, oftentimes we like to... Uh, kind of worship or make excuses or idolize people that have these natural talents. And I say make excuses that we say, well, I can't be as good as that guy. He's just, you know, he's, he's won the lottery uh, in natural talent, you know. So we excuse uh, the, the success of others by uh, they're just gifted. You know, I can't do that. I don't have that kind of natural talent. Um, and then we just use that as an excuse to just maintain the status quo. I can't do that. I, I'm not gifted in that. Uh, there was a magician named uh, David Blaine who gave a TED Talk that's been seen by 26 million people. And it was called How I Held My Breath for 17 Minutes. 17 minutes. Think about that. I hold my breath for, 40, my breath for 45 seconds underwater. I feel like my lungs are about to pop. Okay, 17 minutes, how do you do something like that? Well, because he's a magician, he was talking to other magicians about how could I do this? And they said, well, just, you're not gonna be able to break the world record in that, just trick people. You know, do some magic with that, make it look like you're holding your breath for 17 minutes. Well, he actually decided um, to do it, and he went on Oprah Winfrey and did it. Now, I'm sure that was a super exciting show to sit there and watch a guy hold his breath for 17 minutes, but apparently that's what happened. I don't know if they had something else going on in the background. But Blaine says this, he says, it's practice, it's training, it's experimenting while pushing through the pain to be the best I could be. And that's what magic is uh, to me. So really what he's saying is, is that there's no magic in it. It's just magic is actually hard work. That's where the magic is. It's, it's in outworking everybody. There was a study uh, of Olympic swimmers that went on for a couple of decades. And, and the assessment was this, it says, simply put, talent does not lead to excellence. Contrary to the opinion, it never has and it never will. So, I mean, you have guys like Michael Phelps or sort of a, an anomaly. You know, he's 6'5 or whatever. He has a wingspan that's 6'7 and he wears a size 14 uh, shoe. But that's not what made him great. Now, it helped. You know, it helped to have that natural talent. I had a guy on my uh, college basketball team who was about 7 foot tall, maybe 6 foot 11, with the nickname Love Machine. He used... Well, <laughs> He tried to get that nickname. I don't know if anybody actually ever called him Love Machine, but the Love Machine was not a good basketball player. I can't even remember his name, but he was seven feet tall and he started you know, on the team. And I knew I had put in way more work into my game than he had. I could shoot the ball better. I could dribble the ball better. I could do a lot of things better than him, but I couldn't, you know, I couldn't start because I wasn't seven feet tall. Okay, sometimes natural talent does win out, but most of the time, 
Okay, hard work is going to do it. So the secret is simple. There's excellence in the mundane. There's excellence in the mundane. There's excellence uh, in just doing the average things consistently good over and over and over again. So the good news is for average Joes like me and like many of you, okay, the, the playing field is really pretty even if we're will, willing to do the hard work. So we, we need to start looking at the sacrifices that people have made to get to where they are. If, if somebody out there is making something look easy, it's because they put a lot of hard work into it. You go, oh man, it comes so easy for that guy. Well, chances are he put in hours or she put in hours of work to make herself excellent at something. So we need to quit envying the outcome that we see in people and we need to start looking at what did they put into it? What was the inputs rather than looking at the outcomes? So excellence requires doing the small, ordinary things consistently right. Excellence is a habit that if it's repeated consistently over and over, you're going to succeed. If you can't do the little things right, remember the, remember the admiral who said, get up and make your bed in the morning? You wanna change the world? If you're not willing to do the little things right, you're never gonna do the big things right. This goes along with scripture. Uh, as we look at the parable of the shrewd manager, we'll look at this slide here, it says, Whoever is faithful with the very little will be faithful with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will be dishonest with much. So if you have not been faithful with worldly wealth, who will you entrust uh, with your true riches? Okay, the point is here, okay, God's going to give you something. He's going to give you a little bit of talent. Are you going to be faithful with that? Are you going to develop that uh, into something so that he can continue to bless you and continue uh, to give you more? Now, I want to look at this thing that says... Um, it's called intrinsic motivation. Intrinsic means you've got this kind of inside of you. It's giving God an A-plus effort. Not worrying about man. It's just giving God the best that you can. It's recognizing God's potential gift uh, that he's given to us. Just like in this parable of the shrewd manager. It's trying to be better, not so much better than other people, but better than what you were yesterday. Let's look at Colossians 3.23. It says, work willingly at, or work hard Whatever you do, as though you are working for the Lord rather than for people. Okay, work willingly at whatever you do. Okay, don't do it begrudgingly. Do it willingly because you know uh, you want to reach that potential that God's put into you and into your heart. So the mundane of excellence, really, if you're an Olympic swimmer, you're a salesman, whatever it is, it's doing one more. It's one more lap. It's one more sales call. Last night, <laughs> after basketball practice, my son never wants to leave the gym until he's made five more three-pointers. Just five more, come on, Dad, five more. And then if he makes the last one and it's not a swish, no, I gotta make another one. I want, it to, I want to walk out of the gym with this thing being perfect. So remember, the only magic that there is in this formula is just outworking everybody else. Remember that first slide, let's look at it again. Almost anybody can accomplish anything if they work at it long enough, hard enough, and smart enough. We tend to overestimate what we can do in one to two years, six to eight months, whatever, on our own ability. But we underestimate what God can do with a lifetime of consistent work that we're putting into it. 10 years, 12 years, 20 years. What is it? How long are you willing to try to be excellent at something? Um, I want to show this clip right here. Uh, this is from a movie that I think is pretty funny. I don't know if everybody would think it's funny. It's, it's called uh, Joe Dirt. Let's listen to what Joe Dirt has to say about keeping on. No, man, but you got to keep going. What am I going to do, quit? That's not an option. You got to keep on keeping on. Life's a garden, dig it. You make it work for you. You never give up, man. That's my philosophy. You hear that in there? Okay, I love it. I love it when he says, life's a garden, dig it. He says, what am I going to do, quit? Okay, so everybody's hassling poor Joe Dirt. He's on national radio. He's talking, and people are calling in and making fun of him and saying, why don't you just quit? Why don't you just give up? And he talks about this. He says, you just got to keep on keeping on, brother. And, and I love that. It's like a total 70s saying, but we do. We have to keep on keeping on. Okay, so we might not see the results right away, but eventually, if we stick with it, uh, we're going to see the results. So winning the day isn't about getting it right the first time. Okay, winning the day, it's about getting it right eventually and getting back up no matter how many times you fall down. It's living to fight another day. Okay, it's not giving up when we have setbacks. People are always blaming their circumstances as for why they can't succeed. Okay, you don't know what I've been through. You know, they'll say things like, you don't know the kind of family that I grew up in. They weren't encouraging. 
we didn't have resources. We didn't have money to send me to college. We didn't have, you know, whatever. I, I grew up in, the, in, I didn't grow up in America like you did. I grew up in Africa or South America or wherever. And we, we tend to make uh, excuses for our circumstances. George Bernard Shaw said this in one of his plays. He says, the people who succeed in this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances they want. And if they can't find them, they make them. Okay, they wake up and they look, what circumstances do I want? What do I want my life to look like? The way you make circumstances change and the way you make uh, different circumstances is by making time for the habits that will create those circumstances. So what do I need to do to, to change my circumstance, okay? What if, I, what if I didn't get a college education? What, you know, what can I change that's gonna help me get to community college? What, what am I going to do that's going to help me get that promotion? What circumstance do I want to change? What extra lap do I need to swim? What extra shot do I need to take? What extra uh, free throw do I need to make before I leave the gym? Whatever the case is, okay, put in the extra time and the effort. Remember, slow and steady uh, is going to win the race. Consistency beats intensity all the time. Bible Gateway this morning, I was, I was looking through some verses on there, and this, they always have like one verse. It's, it's an app that you can get uh, reading through the Bible. And, and this was the verse today, and I thought this is perfect for us as we finish off. It comes from 2 Corinthians 13, 14. It says, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God bless you guys. Have a great week.